Good morning. I'm Dr. Bill Wise, and I work with the American Orthodontic Society. I'm a general dentist now that's been doing orthodontics for about 42 years, and uh, did some before then. Now we mix it with uh, temporal mandibular joint work. Uh, there, you can't separate the two. Uh, that's my uh, honest belief. And uh, I'm going to discuss uh, how we replaced some defective six-year molars with uh, the second and third molar. Just brought the other molars forward and put them in the place. And it'd be hard for you to tell the difference uh, if you look at the finished stuff here when we get through with it. We've got a good many slides here so we're going to go through them pretty fast and uh, kind of show you uh, how to do this. There's no big secret to it. But I feel that dentists in general don't uh, do this very much or they don't think about doing this. They'll put a bridge in there or a implant and then extract the third molars, uh, which I think is a uh, no-no, really. Okay, here we start on the case. Uh, this is uh, after we have closed the gap. These x-rays are not, they're printed out on paper and I took pictures of them. Uh, they don't uh, show real good. Let me go through them. Here's another one where we were closing the space. You see, we had a archway going down here, and it came around and had a little deal like that. It came off, and we activated it and pulled that too, and it brings these teeth forward. We'll show this in detail further on down the uh, line here in just a minute. Uh, now here's the same version, the same picture. It's a little different time. You can see when the time. Now these were taken in Dr. Huerta's office. Uh, I worked with Dr. Huerta for the last 12 years of my practice. Uh, I retired from my practice <laughs> in 75 and uh, went over and worked with uh, Dr. Whirley and uh, I worked there until I was 88 and when I retired there I decided to uh, put some of this stuff on the internet so that's where this has come from so anyway we're moving these teeth up in here we'll show you how we had to jump that one across there to, to get it down correct. Now here we start out, we had a person, uh, this young lady had lost this tooth right here and these teeth had drifted in in a period of years I assume or else she lost this one and the wisdom tooth came in there. Uh, one or the other, uh, but anyway, the tooth is gone up on that, in that uh, upper left uh, side, except that's the upper right side. Uh, okay, now let's go on to the next one. Now we're going to move all these teeth up here. And the same thing over here and on this side we'd be pulling this back to match to get this to class one now here you can pull this back and bring this forward this back this forward and they'll come out about in the equal amounts in here but on this area we could not do that exactly because You'd have to bring them forward with a class two elastic or else you'd bring these teeth back uh, past your class one because they're pretty much lined up here now. So I had to put one of these little tads in the bone down here and bond it to that tooth to hold these in place 
while we brought these forward. So you can watch that happen and that's uh, putting these little screws in the bone and then bonding them to the teeth uh, is, is used an awful lot nowadays. Uh, okay. Now as we go through this you see now we jump over here I don't know where this came from but this is a lip bumper made out of a 018 arch wire you see and it got in here somewhere but that's an excellent picture of how the lip bumper is in here with the Omega and it's in a rectangular wire keeping these teeth it'll pull put the lip pressure on this and push this tooth back or put some pressure on it to go back uh, we'll just jump over that now and go to the next thing this was a cephalometric of this patient taken in 09 and uh, now these are some bite wing x-rays we had uh, this six year motors has a huge uh, root canal filling in it and so we're going to eliminate it this one up here was a little defective it had a huge root canal in it so we take both of these teeth out and now on the other side of the mouth uh, we had a huge defective tooth here and we uh, instead of saving it we removed it now up above was another situation let's go to this so here we've taken out the teeth in this area I didn't take them out I sent them to somebody else there and they took them out now this tooth here is kind of hung in this area right here and I want you to pay attention to that because when we start dragging this forward you've got to get it under that other tooth there so let's watch that now we took it out and started pulling that and as we moved it, it this tooth rose up you see a little bit and then that one slid underneath and came forward now here's we're going to have to put that uh, screw in the bone there to keep that uh, side from going back now all right there's a tremendous <laughs> looking screw and you don't have to have it you go out on the cortical bone on the cheek side and bond this to this tooth then this doesn't move while you move this up into this space right there that's a neat little trick for closing space now here's one taken in 2011 uh, this arch wire has an active force that's going down like this you see and you raise it up and you pull this forward and it'll come out with the roots parallel pretty much down that area so you can watch that as it goes through now we're all the way to now and you see the parallel membranes look pretty thick when you're moving a tooth it has to break down as a bone fills back in it will darken back up again in that area uh, this is going through this now these pictures were taken in uh, Dr. Horton's office we just put a little tag out there put the name and the date on it when we take a group of pictures so these were taken at that time right here just a whole series we're closing this up and we've got these springs on here you see that are, they're bringing that down so that the tooth comes through bodily and that's where a lot of people have a trouble uh, now you see is these teeth come forward they're straight up and down you see the crown is here if one, it wasn't that way this crown would be leaned over and it would be angled like that so it's coming straight forward right in that 
Oh, and we're closing that space up there. I think that's after that screw is taken out. Now here's a good shot of it where the screw is down in the cortical bone out here. And we'll pull this tooth to so this molar comes in contact with that. Then we'll have to finish, take the screw out and finish with the class two elastics in here. So this will be pulled back a little bit, but not much. So you will notice that over here, this is coming together and you can observe the curvature. It's quite, it's different over here than it is on this side. See the different curvature. When we get through, it'll look pretty much the same though. All right, this is 2010, and we have, uh, this is being done with the speed brackets, but I just do not uh, recommend them. So they, they can work, but you don't gain a lot of speed with them, if any speed. All right, the arch wires are tied back Let's go through this pretty quick and we'll get through there. That tooth is coming through. We've got to catch up over on this side. We're kind of behind that one over there. All right, this is 2010 when this series of pictures were taken. Now up above, the space is almost gone in this area, and the tooth is straight up and down. Uh, and down here is about the same, 2011. I think we took all this time. Now, I'm going to hurry right on through the uh, things. Look pretty good right now, no problem. 2011. Now this is just regular orthodontic, so I'm not trying to do that. So at this point we have the space together, uh, but the x-rays were just off, pictures were taken off of paper uh, printout. Now that was before we had it all closed. I'm sorry on that deal. Now here's the finished case though. Now when we got through with it, we put a wrap around retainer and I wanted to hold the, la the labial bar at a certain height. So I put some good composite on there to hold that. So you see that lump of composite will hold that wire right at that point, a little trickling in your retention of the case. Now you can see we've got it lined up and 9 out of 10 dentists would not suspect that the 6 year molars are gone in this area. These are second molars and third molars right there. Same way over on this side. You wouldn't realize those teeth are the second and third molars but they are. And uh, this is looking at it from up of the upper arch and the lower arch. And here is the young lady that uh, she has a beautiful smile. When she smiles, you just see her teeth. And I'll show you when we close the mouth. And the teeth being gone have not affected except this young lady probably would be very protrusive uh, if she had all those molar teeth in there, but this is brought her profile back a little, but I think it helps. Now this is, a, to me, a good profile. There's no problem with that, and the facial height, everything is good. So. Uh, we recommend replacing these defective teeth with the 
with some teeth and it's any extra teeth you have behind bring them forward and fill up the op opening so uh, that's what I think Dennis should take into their diagnostic uh, uh, way you diagnose everything just think about that too give people an alternative rather than going in and putting implants or bridging spaces back there drag the teeth up forward and that works great so I'm gonna hush at this point